Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Destiny. I'm so excited to have you with me today. I am first going to say I think I love this spot. This might be like my new spot in the house to do these videos. I was not expecting the lighting to be just so good. Um, so don't know how I missed that. And I want to also start off by saying I started this video outside and I have my pool pump on and it is um, I think 98 degrees today and I was like I can't I'm gonna just sweat so I was like all right let's go ahead and do this inside I ended up figuring out this perfect spot that I for some reason missed in my house so whatever but we're here and I'm really excited to do today's episode I wanted to commit back to my channel in a way that came like really useful and I wasn't really sure what type of video I wanted to do this week and I was on the phone with my best friend this morning and I was just talking about you know mental health and parenting and I thought why not talk a little bit about that today um, because it just felt right so we're gonna go ahead and dive right into that as a lot of you guys know I have battled depression and anxiety for about three and a half years now yeah yeah, three and a half years now. No, lies. <laughs> what am I talking about? Four and a half years now. And um, it's been a roller coaster. And I've been doing that while um, just balancing a lot of other things that have gone on in my life, whether it was working a full time job, becoming a stay at home mom again, having another child, and um, loss. And, you know, obviously, like we all went through the pandemic and just everything that's happened in the last four and a half years. Yeah, four and a half years. Um, I've navigated my depression with as much grace as I think I've been able to. I am very fortunate uh, that I was able to do that, but I have just recently realized that the topic of depression and parenthood doesn't seem like we are really sure how to navigate that as like as a generation, I should say, because I think where we're at we grew up my and i say we i mean people my age um you know just like around this we grew up in a time where talking about how we felt as children wasn't uh necessarily heard uh you were in my opinion very lucky if your parents took you seriously when you said that your feelings were hurt or that you were sad or that you wanted to be alone or um you know that you felt anxious uh, or not knowing you felt anxious and describing that to a parent i don't feel like we grew up in a time where parents were hyper aware of feelings because they themselves weren't expressed uh, weren't given an opportunity to express themselves either so i wanted to kind of talk about that and just kind of touch on how i navigated it as a parent because I was somebody that was very open about my depression, so much so that I took it to social media and I dumped into that and, and I found um, freedom in my feelings by, ironically, by getting validation from everyone who followed me that was able to relate to me. And it was a really interesting experience um, to be able to find a community of people that had felt like I felt but they themselves weren't openly talking about it and then I realized really quickly that not a lot of people did talk about it um and I think we have a lot of shame behind depression and we have a lot of shame around um any type of emotional weakness in my opinion talking about my opinion I want to first give a nice disclaimer I'm not a doctor I'm not giving you ways of how to handle it I'm just telling you guys how I handled it um, and only from my experience in my experience I did have a doctor um, I had a therapist and a psychiatrist that helped with my care the entire time I also have a very supportive and aware husband who also kept an eye on me like a hawk the entire time um, and a lot of nurses in my family that you know just a lot of awareness around me um so i never was left alone in my journey of depression so i want to really make that clear and this video is really only for and this is a brutal i don't know how to say is it brutal truth or, or this is giving brutal honesty this is really only for the parents that are navigating this um and that are willing to accept that they have these issues and take accountability 
for how to navigate it to the best of their ability so give that disclaimer because I think that's important to know it's depression is a journey to get through in my opinion um, I wasn't somebody that wanted to live in my depression I absolutely did not want to feel that way like ever again um, and the main thing that kept me fighting for more was that I knew my kids deserved the best version of me um, and I wasn't going to be able to give the best version of me in the depths of my depression. So my journey with depression, I have documented, like I have a ton of videos on my channel that you guys can go to and just see how I navigated it through a vlog or through these sit downs. Um, but today I really want to talk about parent to child, how I navigated that. That's not something I was not that it wasn't necessarily that I wasn't open about it it just wasn't something I talked about and it didn't dawn on me to talk about it until recently it wasn't until like you know I'm watching my oldest grow up and he's such a wonderful kid and he's this oh he's so sweet he is the kindest person he is my father's twin I mean <laughs> looks like him acts like him um just well loved and kind you know and I'm watching how he navigated his depression, right? So when I say his depression, it's not that he was clinically diagnosed. It is that he lost his best friend when my father died. Therefore, he was depressed after. He was so sad. And so much of him changed after that. So while I was navigating my depression, I was hyper aware of my kids' emotions. Um, and that led me to a dialogue that does look a little different than what I feel like most people do as parents. Again, I'm not saying this is the right way. If a doctor comes on my comments and says that I completely fucked this up, you know, maybe I am. But I think that in my experience, the way I went about navigating my journey gave my son the tools that he needs to navigate his not only right now or you know not I want to say like right now because he is he has done a lot of coping and healing around my father's passing um but he is going to have waves in life and in my opinion that honesty is a hard truth but a strong tool to have in your tool belt in my opinion, for my kids as they grow up. Sorry, I get emotional all the time. It's like, I don't even bother holding it back, but you know, you just think back over the years and you just can't believe that you're here right now talking about this. But anyway, here we are. And let's go ahead and dive into some questions that I've pulled from numerous sources and just some things that seem to pop up or my own questions that I had and I'm just going to share it all with you guys today, okay? <laughs> One question I actually got a lot was like how did I communicate my depression with my son? Not necessarily how I communicated with him, but how did I um, describe it to him? Because now I had um, a Zay Zay, I, I was getting treated for depression, I had postpartum depression, so that was the start of it all for me. Um, so for Zay, you know, he only got me sadly at my worst. And that's a hard truth that I had to acknowledge. And I do have like a whole other video of that and my honesty behind, you know, parenting and depression. Um, but I had to say that I had to hold accountability to that because it is what kept um, fuel and me to keep fighting for my better version. And that better version did go through stages. So like a synopsis of the stages was like postpartum depression, was treated by a midwife, then a general doctor. Um, that general doctor led through the, the pandemic. And then um, I want to also add, I was working out at this time. So I tried to do my fitness and keep myself active. Um, and then I lost my dad during the pandemic. That sent me through what I probably now can admit is more of a psychosis than anything else. I don't know. It was severe. It, I was diagnosed with severe post um, a severe depression and, and anxiety and it, it, whatever. Anyway, the point of the story is, is that I um, was treated with a psychiatrist and a therapist during that time. 
and I did all of that worked really hard on my medication um, on my verbal uh, healing with my therapist and that took oh I had that was an unveiling in itself that was me learning how to be honest about who I was and why this healing was what it was and just coping with grief in itself that's just time there's no I don't think there's really any I think the supports are needed like therapy and all those things um and family and love and comfort and self-healing and all those things are mushed into grief healing but during all of that my son you know was he was going through his stuff and I don't want to put his business out there so we're going to keep his section of this short but if I wasn't there to tell him what he was going through he wouldn't have known that's one and if I wasn't there to show him I get it I'm with you on this I'm feeling this too and this is how I'm working on it and I'm here to show you that and we're going to work on this together I had no other choice as a mother to do that in my opinion you know in the best way for him it's how unfair it would have been for him to see me just spiral there was just so much that I had to be aware of and it was in regards to them so showing my son that you know these are the feelings that I'm going through and him being able to say like oh I feel that too that identifying that gave him that awareness um, it made him feel heard, it made him feel seen, and it made him feel safe. And I'm gonna, I'm not, I shouldn't, it's not like I'm speaking for him. These are things that we've talked about. All right, so how can we talk with our kids about depression? I think one of the things with that is like just being honest about your feelings. Normalizing you talking about your feelings opens that door for your kids to feel safe enough to talk to you about their feelings. And I think that kind of saves them the headache or confusion of trying to identify what it is they're going through. Um, sometimes we don't even know that we're depressed or we don't know that we're anxious. We just think that this is the way that we should feel and be. Like, I'm working and I'm, you know, working out and I'm working a full-time job and I'm taking care of kids and I'm crashing every night and I'm doing it, like, day in and day out. I should be exhausted this is what it feels like yeah don't get me wrong you should be exhausted that's a lot that doesn't mean we should be burning ourselves out and when we burn ourselves out like energetically because our scale isn't being properly balanced we're not being able to pour into those areas you know where we can be patient with our kids where we can you know be present with our kids so you know we're rattling our nervous system so much that we're missing this this really good area where we can really do this really great tending to if we're you know if we slow down a little bit but we're so caught up in routine that we don't realize that we're living in survival mode ourselves therefore our kids are right there with us so I think the communication is important with our kids to say um how we're feeling so they can be related to but it also gives you an opportunity to slow down and be a little present with them so it's kind of like a, it's a win-win in my opinion to in my opinion okay to be um a little more open and how we're feeling now i'm not saying to put it all on their plate like yeah i'm depressed and last night i thought that's not your kid's place you know you were doing it in an age-appropriate manner like you know i know how you're feeling i can see that you seem a little sad today dude what's going on and that gives him an opportunity to talk and you can say you know what i've had those days too and, or i'm having those days as well right now tell me you know what's making you feel this way it's not to say that you know if he says to me like oh mom what's making you feel you know anxious today i'm gonna be like well i had to pay this bill that bill no that's not for him but i can say like you know some adult mommy things that I have going on but I'm just lucky to be here right now and to be a mom with you and I follow it up with a positive always because um I am lucky enough to be here even through the anxiety and depression I am so very blessed to be here with you guys today so that is the truth <laughs> and I again I just keep that open line of communication everyone is different but I have found that this has really opened up a whole new world for me and my kids to really sit and talk and my kids are very self-aware kids i'm very thankful for that so yeah i think that that's in my opinion the best way to go about it another thing i got was is how did i navigate my depression symptoms while still balancing being a mom 
Um, this one, there's a lot of factors, so we're going to just go through them pretty quick. First thing was I became super self-aware. I took full accountability of what was going on. I was just like, okay, this is it. And I'm going to be honest with myself. And I wanted to get better, so I fought to get better. And it was an everyday struggle. And some days were really sucky. And some days were really beautiful. Most days were really great. A lot of it I don't remember. That's how foggy I was. Um, so that was a big portion of it was me wanting that and fighting for that. Um, my support system is A1. My husband um, was and is so wildly supportive of everything and anything I do. Um, and during my depression, when I didn't know what the fuck was going on, he was right there with me looking for help with me being super patient with me. Uh, he just, I mean, loved on me. So that was that. Plus my family is like obnoxiously close and like my husband's family and I are really close as well. I just had a lot of love around me. My friends that were here, my friends in Florida, like I just have a lot of love. I'm very thankful. My sister, just people like around, my mom, <laughs> um, just a lot of support there. And um, these are all people that stepped in when I couldn't. Um, these are all people that when I was losing my mind were like, I'm going to come over and sit with your kids. These are people that let me be alone and cry so that my kids didn't need to see it. Um, they're, they're my support system. I had my, my tribe, bro. They were just insane. So um, that and, um, and I'm very privileged to say, you know, those things about all of the above. And I'm thankful for that. I was on my medication, so I wasn't fighting against the depression alone, alone. I had, you know, a little work there, so I was able to, like, force myself to do what I could do. And need, oh, I, I forced myself to do what I needed to do, and I did my best in those areas until I was able to get out of that and go to, like, the next step. Like, now I don't, now I can do a little bit more than what I just need to do and now I could do a little bit more like of what I want to do so it was really um you know like I said those doctors and that support system there then I would say I um fell in love with YouTube moms that's why I'm here today and I found women that had really strong morning routines um that were stay-at-home moms so people that I identified with really helped so, um, Brianna Kay was one of my, like, go-tos at the time, or, like, till vacuum do us part, um, where I saw, like, inspiration for home, or, um, good, like I said, morning routines, and just things to, like, look forward to. So, um, I got a lot of inspiration from that community, and I, um, instilled it in myself and I started a 5 a.m. Um, routine for myself I've been getting up at 5 a.m. literally ever since it's been life-changing and that was actually probably my next suggestion I wake up at 5 a.m. every day on the weekends I will give myself like a break I still wake up at 5 a.m. it's changed my life let me start with saying I get ready by myself I don't have a kid right next to me. I have time to be quiet, to move slower. I do half of my cleaning at 5.30 in the morning. Um, or I'll go to the gym, so it kind of depends on what I'm doing that day. Um, I will, you know, switch over the laundry and do dishes, just surface clean, whatever. That just, then I don't have to do it later. Um... I am a writer so that gives me like my day to write and be creative and have my space or I'll drop the kids off and like go to the gym so like those types of things but I am very very routined. I have a like a pretty set routine daily on like what times I'm doing what. I have like a plan for what I'm making every day so I'm not scrambling trying to figure out what I'm going to make. I shop for groceries pretty much once a week I'll do a target pickup order in between if I need anything just so that I'm not like again like uh, coming into the house and being like oh, what I have to figure it all out like planning has helped me a lot um it also like motivated me to like move um and then that would be my next suggestion would be movement <laughs> um, movement was essential and 
my depression um all of these things all showed my kids um routine as well and these healthy situations around them so while it's i'm listing things that help me i these all rolled into my kids so they saw my husband being loving and supportive my family being loving and supportive my friends being present um mommy is working out mommy is cooking dinner mommy cleaned the house because for a period there your mother wasn't doing anything i hired somebody to clean i am admitting that now i almost i never cooked i just got them food on the go every day like i mean i was doing bare minimum during the pits of the depression all right i my battery died so sorry all right anyway so those were my strategies on how i navigated that portion of it and like i said it just all rolled into their routine and it worked and um yeah so that was that um one part of that that i think is really important to make its own is that awareness factor i think being super self-aware during your depression kind of helps um only because if there's a time where i wasn't able to be like the not i wasn't the best version of myself but if i was just too overwhelmed and i just felt too far gone if i felt like you know um easily triggered or um irritable i would typically like call in reinforcements during those times so those were the times where i just let myself feel safe and say like i would ask my mother-in-law if she can take the kids um just so that i can have like a night because at this time i would also like to add my son like didn't sleep at all like my youngest son he was he's up, he's up every night so i wasn't sleeping my sleeping pattern was so wildly inconsistent so and so was you know he was irritable too so two irritable people in the house it just it's a little too much sometimes so that awareness factor i just think makes a huge difference um i think when you're giving yourself an opportunity to um like regulate your nervous system so that you're not easily triggered not to say that it's never going to happen it's not like you can fully control when you're going to be triggered but you know a little balance in there is, is healthy for you and for the kids so to me it was a win-win <laughs> you always hear me say that to me it was a win-win also piggyback off of this for working moms too i know that i'm a stay-at-home mom so i can like plug in working out and stuff throughout the day while the kids are at school but i did work as well during this time um, I managed a salon at one point and then I um, taught cosmetology for a period of time as well, like after my dad died. So I, nav I navigated both waters. When I was working, um, routine was still essential. I woke up way before my kids got fully ready so I didn't have to worry about it. That way when I got them up, no matter what person, <laughs> what version of my kids was waking up that day, um, at least on my end, I was ready, so I didn't have to rush. I could just get them out the door and get them to school or daycare, whatever they were going at the time. So routine is still really big. I shopped ahead as well. I was working and making easy meals. I was not overextending myself on my work days. I did like my more elaborate meals on the weekends or on holidays. Um, again, working smarter, not hard. <laughs> smarter working smarter not harder and motherhood just makes more sense to me so that let me slow down a lot and again let me be a little more present at home and the little bit of time i felt like i had during all of that chaos um it just helped ease my anxiety as well i felt really good when i was working you know i feel really good as a stay-at-home mom as well i still work because like i said i'm a writer but when I was working away from home and having to go like from work to schools and this and the other sports and all that stuff, um, I loved it. So I think making sure where my hours were spent when I wasn't home, that it was somewhere I really wanted to be was really important as well. Again, I know that could be a privilege to some, but I think that if we really open ourselves up to opportunities, we might find areas that work for us that we can benefit and actually like working at. We don't always have to be in situations that drain us. So again, that's just taking a little bit of that time and asking yourself like, do you think you're worth that? And I thought I was and I think I am. Therefore, I, I do these things that light me up 
when I am working or I'm away from my kids, there are for they, it's for reasons that align for me. So, some things that I think help too is learning when you're projecting on your kids. So again, back to the self awareness piece. Um, I found that a lot of the times that I was being short with my kids, it had more to do with me and less to do with them. So again, just kind of owning my shit was huge in motherhood and navigating my waters with the depression and, and, you know, mommying at the same time. Um, and if I did fall short and I always do because I am human, I always apologize to my kids. Like, you know, I'm really sorry I yelled at you. I shouldn't have done that but this is why I felt frustrated and I would really appreciate if next time we can do this this and this a car for my four-year-old he's like you know what you said but for my oldest he's um he hears it you know and he sees it and you know then he can say too when he's short with someone or you know with me or whoever you know he has the opportunity to see what apologizing for ourselves when we're not our best versions can look like um, and how safe it is to do that. So again, that's just my opinion on that one. And, um, you know, again, these age appropriate situations, I think for a four year old, my conversations with him versus my, you know, almost nine year old, they look totally different. So with my youngest, I understand that he actually doesn't know what he's feeling. So I'll ask him like, how does that make you feel? Or is your heart sad? Or you know, did that hurt your feelings? You know, just so he can identify his frustrations, his sadness, his angry, you know, just identifying his feelings. My oldest, um, if I see a, a change in his movement or his attitude, I'll just say like, dude, if you want to talk about it, it's cool. I could understand and I'll just throw out like a theory that I think he might have going on. And if he does it, he'll tell me or he'll say like whatever he's willing to say. And if he doesn't want to talk about that, you know, I accept that too because that's his choice. I just always give him space to have that opportunity to discuss his feelings. And I also openly discuss mine. Like if I am short, I'm like, dudes, guys, I'm sorry I'm having a rough day today. Or when I was going through my treatment and stuff, like, guys, it's, you know, I'm a little tired today. You know, I was just honest. I was honest, you know, to their appropriate age level honesty. And my kids respect me enough to to respect where I was at and that's just how it ended up being and lastly and this one hmm oh most of you guys aren't gonna like this one this one's a hard pill to swallow fam <laughs> hard one there are always signs when your shit is affecting your kids you can pretend you don't see it but reality is is that I knew if I did not get all these things done, do all this work and try my best and blah, 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 my shit was gonna affect my kids, my husband and everyone else that loved me and was around me. That's just like literally, that's a fact. <laughs> There's no other way of going around it, right? Don't ignore your signs. If you know that your kids are being affected by your shit, like do the work because they're worth it, you know? And if you don't think you're worth it, do it for them. I did it for me because I knew it was going to work out and their benefits. So that's how I approach it. But if you need to get into this and you're looking for it and you don't feel like you are worth it alone, do it for them. Because you can't undo their childhood. You can't undo the things that they're seeing in front of them. You can't take back half the shit that we, you know, you've exposed them to. I had to accept that, you know, I had to accept that my parent, my kids saw me at my worst and like, I can't undo that. And by the time I got out of my gray area, you know, I was like, damn, like that sucks. But you know what? I have the rest of my life to show them that, yeah, you saw that, but here we are, we're going, we're fighting. This is a human reaction. I was allowed to act that way. I was allowed to feel sad. I lost my best friend. My son lost his best friend. I had hormone depression. I had I had real life things going on that I'm not going to talk about because it's none of your business, but it was life. And I'm allowed to be human. I'm allowed to be human. That didn't mean that I could continue it or not own up to it or you know what I mean? Like to ignore it, to blatantly ignore it would do them a complete disjustice in their childhood. 
I know this because the amount of inner child healing that I had to do, you know, in the last six months with my TBM journey, which I will link below. I have a whole video on that. Um, I see now, man, like what our kids have to go through, um, what we went through as kids, you know, and it, you could have the perfect childhood, but be affected by slight bullying or major bullying at school or whatever, whatever life threw at you life is gonna hit you, right? So, to me, I couldn't live in that because then I'm giving my kids an example of A, that they could live in that, I don't want that for them. I want them to have better opportunities. I had great parents and I was very privileged and happy to have these situations and I wanna pass that on and give them more to half asset because I'm too lazy to do the work or I'm too scared was like, that didn't make sense to me. I'm scared to heal myself. I'm scared to face my truths. How do I sound? That wasn't fair to them because I was afraid of something that couldn't even hurt me. None of the healing that I've done in the last six months or five months or however long it's been now and TBM and my inner child work and my unblocking and shadowing and all those things, it didn't hurt me. I mean, I cried and I, I, it was painful and the waves of like you know trauma releases I had but holding on to it would have killed me so y'all gotta weigh your evils out because in my opinion if you're seeing red flags and you know it's because of your shit and you're still willing to do your shit and not get these tools not get this help whatever works for you you gotta look in the mirror bro and ask yourself like what's your priorities you know so that's my advice to anyone that sees the red flags you know, you either figure it out together as a family and get the help and grow and, you know, do whatever it is that you're doing or, you know, own it yourself and get your help. And that that was my journey. And I indirectly, you know, tried to mend as best as I could. And I continue to and I'm growing from it. And I'm honored that it's me that's on this journey and that I'm able to be this parent. You know, there's a ton of other variations of what you can do, I'm sure. But I would start with admitting it. That, you know there's something going on and getting help you know and and showing your kids that they are worth getting help you know that they're worth being seen and being safe and being happy and they're worth you getting happy and finding yourself so depression and navigating it with my kids it was a no-brainer it was not easy I don't mean it like a no-brainer like that I mean that I had no other choice but to do it this way because it was a no-brainer for me like I, it was my only option that's who I am as a mom so it was like I knew that I could not put them in any other path than this um, to the best of my ability of course and I'm proud of that my journey and who I am because I've displayed resilience to them and my children are extremely resilient and I see it every day. They are beautiful inside and out. They are happy. They are loving. They are respectful men. They see love. They see how much their father loves me. They get grossed out every time he kisses me. They see affection and they are given affection. They see um, the a balance um, to the best of our ability but they also see truth they saw the work they saw um, the things that were hidden um, from me as a child that I was given um, like not given but not by my parents intentionally either but it was it was the things that no one talked about behind closed doors these things these the subject here um, not knowing that made me feel really confused um, and when I'm navigating these waters, I'm thankful that I am a resilient person. I was always a resilient person, um, but I can see very clearly how that can go south. And that's where that awareness factor comes in. So um, anytime you can display strength in any way to your children, healthy strength and um, healthy grows um anything like uh like a healthy lifestyle any opportunity you get to show your kids a version of that i think you should always take it um i wanted to show my kids a healthy marriage i wanted to show my kids um a healthy mom i wanted to be healthy for them for myself and for my marriage and i wanted to be healthy to have a life because i i'm deserving of that and you know i 
thought that and I believe that um, and I think that you should believe that too because if you watch this video somewhere in the back of your head you know that you're worth it. Alright guys, so I think I gave you everything. Um, definitely the comments down below and let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to talk about. You can also DM me on Instagram at destinycruise underscore. I am right now currently taking a little bit of a hiatus. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going back. I am almost finished my book. I might go back once I'm done, um, but we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more episodes like this, probably in this area. I'm kind of liking it. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>